All right, guys. They had to uh, disconnect the microphone because the battery died, and I can only uh, be plugged in now to have power on my phone. So I want to say goodbye. I can tell my uh, my wife's going to come up here in seconds and go, what the fuck? You did an 8 o'clock and it's 10 o'clock. you got to help me put the kids to bed. What the fuck? That's what she's going to say. So, yeah, this is take three. Um, so I got no headset. I got no microphone hooked in. This is just the phone and me in this uh, makeshift studio. So I wanted to say... Uh, Goodbye, good night to everybody. This was the Monday episode. It was take three. Thank you. If you're going to come to Philly, I'd love to have you. I'd love to have you. Come out. I'll be there Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at the Punchline, my first time ever there. Here it's, here it's in a really cool part of Philly. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So come out. All right? Or come to Atlantic City the week after that. All right? I'm sure Anne Marie. Are you like a South Jersey person, Anne Marie? Are you a Philly person? Good night, Tracy. I'll see you in Atlantic City. Good night, Mikhail Bizel. Uh, who else? Who else is, uh, came back on to this feed? It's up to seven right now. Maybe when I get it up to like 20, I will uh, say good night and uh, end the whole thing. For tonight, thanks for making fun of me and your Jim Florentine impression that made my life. I'm glad. You live in Albany. Oh, you saw me in the Albany show. Oh, I don't have anything planned up there for a while. Patrick Clemens. Uh, cheers, Joe. What's up, Walrus? How are you? I never opened the beer. Oh, my God. I've had, I've had this Guinness beer sitting here during the shitty podcast. Man. It's amazing how my personality needs a connection, and when it doesn't have it, I'm terrible. Oh, God. I just spilled it all over my computer. I just spilled. I just spilled the beer. You suck. That's how my night's going. Hold on, folks. Hold on. We spilled some Guinness. Does Guinness stain a tan carpet? Whew. I think it does. It's funny because, like, kind of what I'm doing with this podcast was a, was a pitch I I had for when the, they were trying to turn Fixing Joe into a television show. And I wanted to be a guy that had a really shitty, like what I was doing earlier tonight, like a really shitty public access show where it was about my life in the public access show. And you saw during the public access show that it would cut to my real life. So you would see that the real life is fodder for this guy's shitty public access show. That he was doing like in his basement or in, in my attic like I'm doing now. And I, I hear my wife. She just slammed the door. She's going to be coming up here and yelling at me any second now. And I wanted the life to come into the talk show. Makes sense? Sending your positive vibes. Hope you were doing well. Thanks, Frank. I just uh, tuned in. Did I miss the Vinnie Brand story? I never finished the Vinnie Brand story. I was waiting until I got up to about 20 people. I don't really want to burn the Vinnie Brand bridge. He owns two comedy clubs. But we always tease Vinnie. Because Vinnie's known to do a fucking hour of stand-up as the MC. Like, up front, do a fucking hour. And kill. And do, like, crowd work. And fucking an hour. And then you gotta follow him. So, like, it was just funny to hear him go, oh, I'm always so great to the com I'm like, dude, you do an hour. What comedian wants the MC to do fucking 60 minutes before them? And then he's like, oh, sorry, sorry. Come on, Ben. I'm not saying that Vinny said the stuff that, you know, that he was. I I'm sure that Vinny was probably speaking the truth 
about that whole Pete Davidson thing that he just said what the guy told him to do. But I have not talked to Kevin Brennan lately. No. He's not funny. <laughs> Vinny Brand. Vinny Brand's pretty good. For a club owner, he's the front fucking probably the best club owner comedian in, in the fucking world. All right, my wife's coming up. I gotta hang up. I'm about to get divorced. Right? Is that Luke? I borrow a charger. Oh, it's Luke. You want a charger? Yeah. I only have one charger, and I'm on like three percent right now. You took that charger like an hour ago. How are you on three percent? Because I had to unplug it, then do a podcast, and then now I'm plugged in. Now, so I'm able to, I'm ending the podcast, and once I'm done in about three minutes, I can give you the charger. All right, close the door, I'll give it to you in three minutes. Don't worry about it. All right, I'm, I'm missing, there's like a fucking ton of questions coming here on the screen. Uh, okay, we left it. Ron Malone, I heard a rumor Anthony Kumi is bit... Vinny's daughter's hand. Is that true? Well, they got in that big fight on uh, streaming video. I mean, that, you know that, right? You saw that. Everybody saw that. That was just a weird relationship. Vinny Brand's daughter and Anthony Cumia, that I think is older than Vinny Brand. That's weird. God, I hope that never happens with me where my daughter's like fucking young and dating some like old man in the comedy business. Uh I live by the stress factory. I haven't been in the... Sh Vinny has not booked me at the stress factory. I don't think what I said earlier is going to help me get a booking anytime soon. But he has not booked me at the stress factory in like fucking five years. He booked me at the one in Connecticut about a year ago. But not at the Jersey one. That's another one of those clubs that's that goes down as like... If you don't have the huge social media following, he just won't book you. So I can't get booked, even though I was I probably worked, I probably fucking headlined the Stress Factory, twenty times, probably twenty times in my life. Um, let's see what else we got here. Busted! Don't steal home, buddy. <laughs> Your son is more alpha than you. Yeah, he is actually. Uh, third time's a charm. You should stay on since you finally fixed your deck issues. You were talking about Vinny Brand. Yes, I don't know what hand biting thing you're talking about but that's okay yeah I don't know about that either did you ever date young babes when you were single yes but not that much you know my young like I think when I was 31 I dated a 21 year old girl like that's as extreme as it went like 10 years so you're pro biting Kumia is sick my Worst fear is my daughter being snatched up by Kumia. Yeah, that wouldn't be good. Vinny, is, Vinny stinks. You don't need him. <laughs> well, I guess I don't because I said that about him on the, my podcast. No, he dated hot older women. <laughs> Tracy was an older girl that I dated when I was... She'll know the exact age. I think I was 17 and she was 18. Joe is a silver fox. Thank you. If your is your studio fully soundproof? I had soundproofing on it. I took it all down. It's I got rug on the floor. Can you see? There's rug on the floor. Uh, no one would fuck your daughter. Don't worry. Yeah, she's seven. <laughs> so you're going to jail if you fuck my daughter. She's fucking seven. Uh, will you give a shout out to my good friend Joy? Joy, joy. Well, guys, I spilled uh, Guinness all over the table. It's all over the floor. I gotta go. Uh, I gotta go help my wife put the kids to bed. They're up way too late right now. Uh, love when you flash your bulge. Can you see that? Is there a bulge? Uh, maybe Anthony Cumia would. Well, guys, this was fun. Good night. We'll do this. I guess this is the way I have to do it every Monday. I just turn the mic on. I'll have the mic. 
and then I'll just talk to the camera. But I have to have a fully 100% charge when I shot. My daughter fucking grabbed my phone and was using it for two hours without me knowing. And I went to go start preparing for the podcast, and I had no charge. That's what happened tonight, and I apologize. You're working any new furniture pieces these days. I don't. I don't. I will be painting a fence in the backyard. Uh, great podcast. Thank you, Ronnie. Did I make fans out of you guys? I'll, I promise. I'll stop calling you guys trolls. Let's, let's have a truce. Stop calling you guys trolls. I'll call you comedy fans. Um, I would love it if you guys could teach me how to make you guys my fans and make you like me. I need this. I like, I like the connection, you know? I mean, I don't mind you shitting on me. It's fine. But I would actually like you to, like, go, you know what? I like Joe. I'm going to go see Joe. Or I'm going to go watch Joe do his live. I'm going to watch a live stream of Joe. I like Joe. I want you to actually like me. So if there's something in me that I do that you like, you can you can voice it here. And it seems like it's this. Just you ask. I say honest shit. I don't hold back. You, I don't care if I burn a street. Uh, uh, live stream my fence painting <laughs> it would be so boring uh wh who could shit on a philly fan i want a fence painting stream <laughs> you got it you got it it's gonna be ugly dude well i'm glad we had this time i feel like we uh we connected we understand each other uh all right what am i absolutely right about i want to know Joe, your Florentine floors me every time. Thank you. We aren't shitting on you, Joe. You provide tons of entertainment. Thank you. Thank you. I know. I know. Thank you, man. I guess it's... I overreact. You know, because some of the guys, like, you know, put my fucking address and my... You know, they do all kind of weird shit, call clubs as, as me. And then, uh, you know, some of those clubs don't book me anymore because I know it's a pain in the ass. And uh, I need those clubs, to be honest. I need to make a living. So, okay, I love you. I'll tell the BBQ guys to be nice. All right, man, I appreciate it. All right, guys, love you. Arnold DeMarco just got back from an Italy trip. Where would that come from? I gotta say goodnight, man. You guys just keep writing shit. Gotta go. Hear my daughter downstairs. Love you. See ya.